Hi, Mr. Spohn here, and today we're going to talk about density. I'm going to give you a crash course on density. Density is used in a ton of different scientific disciplines. Uh, there's a whole set of them on the left. You can read astronomy, meteorology, physics. It deals with sinking, floating, identifying materials. So density is a very, very important concept. We're going to use it when we talk about fluids in this fluids dynamics chapter. Um, so we are going to go over some of the basics of it to start. And we have two very cool pictures here. They almost look photoshopped. Um, but they are not. You have people floating very high on water. And we, the reason this is possible is because they're probably either in the Dead Sea or the Great Salt Lake, both of which are very, very salty. When you add salt to water and it dissolves, the solution becomes much, much denser. So it is actually a lot easier for people to float in salty water. Um, it is actually easier to float at the ocean. If you ever swam in an ocean or a lake, you know this. Though at the ocean, you do have waves and other things making it more difficult. Um, so, density. We'll start with definitions. It's simply a measure of how compact something is, and I have atoms written there because everything is made of atoms. Um, everything is made of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, but some substances just have more protons than others. And the closer these particles are together, the more dense something is. So, the more compact something is, the more dense it is. And density is simply mathematically a ratio of mass to volume. That simply means mass divided by volume. There is a formula for density. Uh, P, it's not really a P, it's the Greek letter rho. That's the, pretty much a scientific symbol for density. We don't use D. Uh, rho equals M over V. Density equals mass divided by volume. And density can be measured in grams per centimeter cubed. Uh, gram is a measure of mass. Centimeter cubed is a measure of volume. Uh, you could also use grams per milliliters. Milliliters are also a measure of volume, how much space a liquid's taking up. Or you could use kilograms and meters. Um, so there's different units for that. And we know, of course, mass can be measured in grams or kilograms. And volume, centimeters cubed, milliliters, or meters cubed. We're going to focus with grams per centimeter cubed or grams per milliliter. They're exactly the same thing. Um, and we do have a picture of a few things here, a sugar cube. I do want you to realize that a standard sugar cube, it's a little bit bigger, but it's roughly a centimeter cube. Um, so if you've ever seen a sugar cube or have one, um, something a little bit smaller than this is basically one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So that's what we mean by a milliliter as well. If you were to break this down into powder and put it into a graduated cylinder, it should take up one milliliter of space. A centimeter cube is a milliliter. It's also a CC. If you remember those uh, doctor movies, I need three CC stat, and, ah, and you inject yourself with something. Well, three CC just means three cubic centimeters. So a CC is a milliliter or a centimeter cube. So keep those terms in mind. Um, to visualize density, we have a brick and a sponge. If you notice, they are the same volume, meaning they take up the same amount of space. I have one here. You have a brick, and you have a piece of styrofoam. They're roughly the same size. Um, I didn't have a sponge the same size, so uh, just to kind of understand density, you don't want to get hit in the face with dense objects. I can smack myself with the styrofoam. Uh, it's fine. It's not very dense. But if I were to smack myself with a brick, uh, this video would not end very well. So pillow fights are fun. Cinder block fights are not. So keep that in mind. Density, heavy like objects with a lot of heft to them, a lot of oomph to them, um, are going to be your denser objects. They're more compact. They hurt more when you get hit with them. Okay, so how do we determine the density of any object? Um, we know what density is, so how do we figure it out? Well, you got to figure out the mass and volume of an object. Each metal, there's six different metals here on the left, will have their own unique density value. And in order to determine that, well, we just figure out mass and volume. Mass is very easy. You just put an object on a scale. It gives you a mass. Uh, volume isn't too bad. If you have a regularly shaped object, like a, a cube or, you know, a rectangular solid, you can just use a formula. A uh, circle is 4 thirds pi r cubed. A sphere is length times width times height. There's formulas for cylinders and many other geometric shapes. So sometimes we can just measure, you know, the length, the width, and the height with a ruler, and we can use a formula to figure out the volume. And that'll work for a lot of different materials. Um, what if the object is not regularly shaped? What if you needed to determine the volume of, say, a rock or something or anything that does not have a regular shape. Um, well, what we are gonna do is use water displacement. You may have heard of this before, but you're gonna start with a graduated cylinder. Um, you're gonna have the water level at some known mark, some known amount in the screen at six milliliters. You're gonna take an object, you're gonna drop that object into the graduated cylinder. A little more carefully than that, 
Um, you just want to do it at an angle so you don't splash water. But the water level is going to rise. However big this object was, the water level is going to rise by the same amount because water is not compressible or not very compressible. So in this case, we're dropping a screw into the graduated cylinder. It started at 6. When the screw goes in, it rolls up to 8. And in order to get the volume of that screw, you simply uh, subtract the final water position minus the initial water position. And that's all you really got to do. Um, it should say 2 milliliters, not 20 on that slide. So there's a little error right there. Um, just correct that. So 8 minus 6 is 2. What if an object doesn't fit in a graduated cylinder? Uh, you might be tempted to use a beaker. Um, but beakers, as chemistry students should know, are not for measuring. They are for storing or transferring liquids. The marks on a beaker are rough guidelines, so we never use a beaker to measure an object with any degree of precision. They are not used for that. They don't have the precision or the accuracy needed for those types of measurements. So what we would do is use something called an overflow can. You'd have a can with a spout on it, and basically you'd fill it up over the top with water, and you'd let any excess water drain out. So basically this can is filled to the absolute rim with water. Now, if you're either drop an object into that can, any um, whatever volume that object has is going to cause the water to rise. So now that water is going to actually come out of the can, and it's going to fill your graduated cylinder. So whatever it fills it with is the volume of the object that was placed in it. So um, there's many different ways to figure out volume of objects. Um, that's how we do it. So continuing our crash course. Remember, this is a little quick because it's a crash course. Um, objects will sink or float based on density. This brick, as you could guess, if I place it in a big tub of water, it's going to sink right to the bottom because it's very, very dense. It's denser than water. This styrofoam is very, very light, has a very low density. It's less dense than water, so styrofoam will float in water. In fact, if you think of those boogie boards and things like that, they're usually made of some sort of foam. So an object is more dense than the liquid it's in, it sinks. If it's less dense, it will float. Um, and here's seven different common liquids at home. I would normally do this in class, uh, but we can't this year because of COVID. Um, but anyway, these uh, liquids have different density values. You could make a density column. Um, you start with the densest liquid first. You'd pour a little honey in a cup, and then you know you might pour some light corn syrup. You can use the back of a spoon as you pour it in gently so they don't mix. But you can make some pretty cool uh, density columns, and you could look up some instructions on the internet. Uh, you could put solids in there of different densities that float at different levels, and you can make really, really cool looking things. Uh, you don't have to do that, but just a suggestion. Um, so in grams per centimeters or grams per milliliter, water does have a density of one. That's a very, very convenient uh, system for us for density. Water just has one. So if something has a density greater than one, it will sink in water. If something has a density less than one, it will float. And what that means is in this system, um, if mass is greater than volume, when we're dealing with grams and centimeters, you know, if any time your mass number is greater than your volume number, an object is going to sink. If your volume is greater than your mass number, an object will float. That's going to be very important for your homework. And also, I did want to point out, water is one gram per centimeter cubed, or one gram per milliliter. That means if you had a gram of water, it would take up one milliliter of space. If you had 30 grams of water, it would be 30 milliliters. If I filled this to 80 milliliters, that means there's 80 grams of water in there. Water has a one-to-one -one ratio, which is very, very useful when we're doing things in science. And you probably heard of the expression, just the tip of the iceberg. Um, this expression takes its root in reality, in physics. Um, density can tell us how much of a floating object will be above or below water. Ice has a density of 0.90. Remember, water has a density of one. Um, so 0.90 means that 90% of an ice cube is submerged under fresh water. And that's a perfect relationship. If ice had a density of 0.80, 80% would be there. More on this in the next slide. But that does mean about 90% of an ice cube is submerged under water. And that's where the saying, just the tip of an iceberg, comes from. Um, because the majority of ice, including uh, ice in the oceans, which is not fresh water, but it is submerged underwater. So keep that in mind. Whatever you can see above the water in the ocean, those icebergs, 90% of that ice is still underneath the ocean. Okay, so finally we're going to finish up with this. And it's really just to make sure you understand what density is. And I, I have a large cube of aluminum and a small cube of aluminum. And I ask you, which one has a higher density? Think about this question. Um, you know, what do you say? 
majority of people always tell me, well, the bigger one has a higher density. No, there's more of it. So we're going to see if that's true or not. So let's start with something different. Let's start with a wood block. A wood block has a mass of 10 and a volume of 20. Can we calculate its density? Absolutely. Density is simply mass divided by volume. And mass is 10, volume is 20. 10 over 20 is, of course, 0.5. So the density of this object is 0 0.5. And it will definitely float in water. Now, what would happen if I were to wah, karate chop this wood block in half, in two identical halves, right down the middle? Well, we now have two pieces. If this whole block had a mass of 10, what must each half weigh? Well, each half is going to clearly be 5 grams. 5 grams plus 5 grams is 10. And if this whole block of wood took up 20 centimeters cubed of space, what's each half going to take up? Well, each half is going to have to take up 10 centimeters cubed of space because they're half the size now. And when you look at those two values, now each block that was cut in half has a mass of 5 and a volume of 10. What is its density value? Well, again, density is mass divided by volume. 5 over 10 is 0.5. The density value did not change. Density does not depend on the size of an object. We could do this again. You could chop each block of wood in half again. This would now be 2.5 grams and take up 5 centimeters cubed of space, and it would have the same exact density. We can also do this the opposite way. Instead of cutting something in half, we could put two things together. Suppose we have a cube of aluminum. And this aluminum cube takes up one centimeter cubed of space. It's like the size of a sugar cube, a little bit smaller. And it weighs 2.7 grams. So its density is mass divided by volume. It's 2.7 over 1. Its density is 2.7. Now let's say we have a second cube of aluminum. Its density is identical to the density of the first cube. What if we were to somehow weld or melt these two blocks together into one block? Would their density change? Well, what are both blocks going to weigh? If each block weighs 2.7, well, two of those blocks come together must be 2.7 times 2. So it's going to have a mass of 5.4. If each block takes up 1 centimeter cubed of space, two of them is going to take up 2 centimeters cubed of space. Um, and again, the density turns out to be 2.7. 5.4 divided by 2, mass over volume is 2.7. So again, density does not depend on how much of something we have. So the density in both of these cases is identical. It's exactly the same. And in order to say you truly understand density, you have to understand this concept. If you don't, density is just a definition to you. Um, so we're going to look at one more thing that will help drive this home, and that should be the end of this material. So understanding the meaning of density. So uh, let's just look at the question first. Suppose we have five different cubes, all with an equal volume of one centimeter cubed. How much will each one weigh? So aluminum has a density of 2.7. Water has a density of 1. Gold has a density of 19.3. Wood has a density of 0.85. Sugar has a density of 1.6. So... If you had a cube of aluminum, what would it weigh? If you had a cube of water, one centimeter cube, what would each one weigh? Well, you need to look at what this is saying. Aluminum is 2.7 grams per centimeter cube. That means every centimeter cubed of aluminum you have weighs 2.7 grams. Just like if you were traveling 30 miles an hour. Every hour, you're going to travel 30 miles. Gold has a density of 19.3 grams per centimeter cubed. It means if you had a centimeter cubed of gold, it would weigh 19.3 grams. Density doesn't care how much of something you have. Density simply tells me what a given quantity of a substance weighs. It tells me how much a centimeter cubed of any material will weigh. Sure, if I had a big block of aluminum, it's going to weigh more, but it's going to take up more space. And every centimeter cubed of that big block of aluminum is just going to weigh 2.7 grams. That's why density can be used to identify unknown materials, because every object has its own unique density value in terms of metals and things like that we find in nature. So density is a very, very useful concept. So key concept, density does not, and I repeat this for like the fourth time, depend on the amount of a substance you have. You have a small piece of gold or a large piece of gold. They have the same density, 19.3. Basically, what this is saying is every centimeter cubed that you can break this block into would weigh 19.3 grams. So density is kind of a fundamental property of a substance.
And that's, of course, assuming these are both gold, which they're not. Um, likewise, a drop of water has the same density as a swimming pool full of water. Um, just every milliliter of water weighs one gram, or every centimeter cubed of water weighs one gram. Um, and that's our density presentation, your crash course. A little bit fast, but I hope you uh, followed along and it made sense. Mr. Spong.